Hey guys, I'm Joe. This is the Rebels Advocate, and I'm back. Uh, if you just watched my last video, I literally I just finished it. Sat here for a minute, took a few deep breaths, and now we're into it again. We're going to talk about this uh, this whole point of can God uh, can He deliver you from depression, uh, from your anxiety, from your OCD, from your uh, bipolar. Uh, schizophrenia, you know, whatever uh, these m mental disorders, these kind of what some people call invisible, what it, uh, invisible disabilities, or uh, I can't remember the word for it. You know, in other words, things that someone from the outside looking at you really can't understand. It doesn't look like anything's wrong with you, but you're dealing with uh, problems that have been sti stigmatized for a lot of years. Uh, and almost going to see a therapist, going to see a psychiatrist, you know, uh, anything like that, getting any kind of medication for a, a mental illness, it, it was almost frowned upon. And, you know, you were labeled either crazy or it was, you know, if you just do X, Y, and Z, you'd feel better and you'd get over it. Uh, you need to just kind of pull yourself up and, uh, <clears throat> you need to, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, uh, you know, if you get up every morning and exercise and run five miles and if you do this and that, if you force yourself to smile, force yourself out of bed, do that, you'll feel better. Uh, you get over it. That's what's wrong. And uh, that kind of thinking is really dangerous uh, and it's hurt a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. If I got up every morning and ran five miles... I probably would feel better. But the difference between having a hard time doing that because I just I don't have enough motivation or enough willpower and the difference in trying to do that when you're dealing with depression, anxiety and, and all these things, uh is it's a lot different. And uh you can't really explain it till you go through it. So if you're going through it you know, what's the answer? How do you how do you get better? Can God deliver you from all those things? Can He be your comforter? Uh, you know, the Holy Ghost was sent here to be your comforter and to kind of get you through these things. Jesus Christ, when you welcome Him into your heart, He's your friend, and He walks beside you and guides you, and He's always there, always. <coughs> I apologize. I kind of got a. A uh, whole congested thing going on, which is, you know, I think everybody has right now. But uh, anyway, you know, he's supposed to be there for you always. So, and he can heal you of other physical uh, ailments. So why not heal you of any mental disorders you may be going through? Uh, and that's what I want to talk about. And I could drag this out for a long time. You know, we could look at it very carefully, but let me just give you the short answer. No. He can't. He can't do that. Uh, is there some relief to uh, believing in God? If you're a believer and you believe in God and you're trusting in God to uh, get you through these things, is there some relief? Is there some comfort there? There could be, but that comfort isn't coming from a comforter. That comfort is coming from your belief uh, and nothing else. It's not coming from what you believe in. It's just coming from the fact that you believe that something's there to help you. It's, you know, a basic crutch. And now, here's the thing I want to say to any believers watching this, because I'm an atheist, so of course I'm going to say no, he can't help you. Of course I'm going to say that, and I'm not going to convince you that he can't. You may believe 100% that he can definitely help you. And if you do, I'm not going to argue a whole lot with you. But here is the one thing I would like, I beg of you. Stop telling people that he can. You know, at least stop telling people that that's the answer. I had someone I love today on one of my posts when I was, I was trying to uh, put my feelings out there. Oh, oh, oh. I was trying to put into words, you know, how I felt about certain things. And this person who knows what I'm going through and who I love dearly, uh, you know, told me to read 
I think First Corinthians 15 or uh, some Bible verse. And it was like, that's where we draw our strength from, uh, and that's the answer. You know, the, through the Bible, Jesus and the resurrection, that is the answer. And it just, I had to respectfully disagree, and I kind of went on, I tried to, as nice as I could, explain what I'm about to explain to you now. That is so dangerous. And, and let me tell you why. Because for so long, uh, think I see so many Christians, and if I could talk, like, I wish, I wish I could get Christians to, un to watch this video and to understand what I'm saying. They probably, even if they did watch, wouldn't understand what I'm trying to say. But uh, I have seen so many Christians battle uh, with depression because we all get it. Atheists, Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, like uh, these disorders are no different than any other physical ailment. They affect everyone. The difference is uh, when someone like myself gets it, uh, I could be as bad as the Christian, whereas they believe, you know, they believe other things. I could be to the point where, you know, maybe I don't believe, oh, this is a devil, you know, doing this, or I'm going through a trial or whatever. But I might just think, ah, I'm just, I got the sads and put it off until, you know, thing like, for example, I kind of did. And in, in, in all honesty, I've ignored these problems my entire life until they manifested in a way that I could no longer handle. Uh, I've battled depression my whole life. I've b battled extreme anxiety my whole life. Uh, I've had extreme OCD uh, to the point that it, it, it disrupted my daily life, you know, from the, as far back as I can remember, as small of a kid as I can remember, uh, I have fought those things. So this isn't something that just, uh, crept up on me all of a sudden, but what happened is it, I ignored it and ignored it. And then one day, uh, you know, like it, it just exploded. It exploded and everything, you know, got multiplied to a hundred, I guess. And, and now I'm having to deal with that. Uh, and I'm trying to get help and it's, man, it's been a long road, but I'm trying. And, and here's something that frustrates me. And I was thinking about this today before I get too ahead of myself. But not only do Christians make it hard for other Christians to get help, they make it hard for people like me. Because I know, I know, and I said it in, in like my first video where I addressed this problem. As soon as I put it out there that I have this problem, that gives every Christian the opportunity because they will take advantage of you. They And they, they, they prey on the vulnerable because they know that's their best chance to get you is when you're hurt and when you're down. And instead of trying to help you, with any real actual help that's when they'll say uh you need jesus that's when they'll try to recruit you to their team that's what they do they try to find they're they're like the the lion you know looking at the herd uh they're trying to find the weakest one out there and when they see you down and when they see you limping they're going to come and attack and and yeah they're not attacking you because they want to hurt you they mean like honestly uh the person commenting do you think they meant that in a mean way? No, they didn't. I know in their mind, this was them genuinely trying to help me. Uh, being th from the bottom of their heart, I truly believe that. I don't think they were being spiteful because they know I'm an atheist. I, I honestly think they thought, man, Joe's going through a hard time. Maybe this is a good time to witness to him. Maybe he'll see, you know that he needs God. Maybe he's even thinking about that. In the back of their mind, they probably think, maybe he's even thinking it, you know. He's starting to question things. <clears throat> Whatever it may be. But what they don't realize is by doing that, they're literally discouraging me from even coming out and saying anything. Because I don't want to deal with that. So, I like, I don't even want to admit out loud that this is a problem because I know people are going to come forward saying, oh, it's because you ain't got God. You need God. So imagine if that's kind of holding me back somewhat and I'm not letting it, you know, I went ahead and did it anyway. But imagine for other Christians, for other Christians who, if they come out and admit 
that they're battling depression, that they're battling, you know, whatever it is, uh, imagine how they're going to feel. Because they got Jesus. They're not supposed to get the sads. They're not supposed to have these problems. And so that, you know, and as we come forward, more religious people are getting a little more open to that and, and a little more understanding that, yeah, this is, this is a natural problem. But not all. Not all of them. Not all churches. A lot of them, uh, it's... I wish there was a way to know the number, but you probably don't even want to know it because it would be so depressing, to be honest. Uh, but I can only imagine how many religious people are battling with depression and they're not getting help because every day they think, well, this is the devil. Uh, this is just the old devil trying to get me down because he knows I'm trying to live right. And he's and he's uh, he's pushing as hard as he can to get me turned against God, but it ain't happening because God's he's he's always been there for me. When in reality, no, he hasn't. Like you just think he has. Uh, what what has he done for you? Nothing that you couldn't have done yourself. Nothing that you couldn't have achieved yourself. You think you think you lose somebody in your family? You think there's a death in the family? I could have never made it with God. Look around you. I can point you to atheists that have went through unthinkable tragedies who who have gone through exactly what you've gone through. They've lost a spouse, they've lost a child, you know, they you know whatever it is, they they've gotten cancer themselves and they're facing death. And yeah, even though you think you couldn't possibly make it through without God, guess what? They did. They did. And I'm sure there was a time they thought there's no way I can make it through, but they made it through. With or without God, they made it through. Maybe, you know, maybe you feel like God has brought you comfort. He helped you through that. Maybe, uh, but the thing, here, here, here's the problem. You see, when you believe in God, in order to go to heaven, you have to believe in God. And to believe in God is to believe that he walks beside you. You know, he's li he lives in your heart. He speaks to you. And, and it is to believe that he will pull you through every problem. He will never put more on you than you can bear. He will bring you through. So you have to believe it. it and it is mandatory. You have to believe these things to make it to heaven. Sorry about that, guys. Apparently, God didn't like what I was saying. So, And, and he caused my iPhone to be full. Of the, store, or the storage to be full. I ran out. So I had to go delete a few apps to try to get this video done so anyway what i was saying is you have to believe all those things you you know there is literally no room for doubt you if you believe in god and and he demands that you have full you know trust in him faith in him so there like i said there's no room for doubt you can't like to even say I'm not, like, how could a Christian possibly say, if you ask them, is God helping you through this? Is he really, how, they can't say no. They can't say, you can't possibly say, I'm going through something, and you know what? God isn't helping me at all. They're not going to say that. They're going to say, he's always with me. He pulls me through, even when I don't make it, even when I don't understand. God is there, and he helps me. And, you know, it's it, it, it would be like uh, a negotiator coming back and saying, well, that hostage back there that has a gun to his head, I thought he was in bad shape, but I actually I talked to him, and he said uh, they're treating him fine and everything's good. Don't worry. So uh, he, I guess he's fine. No, uh, he has to say that. He's got a gun to his head. Uh, you know, that's... And so imagine if you already feel that way, now imagine the pressure, the kind of peer pressure from all the other Christians, and you don't want to be the one who says, I'm struggling with something I can't beat. Like, God's not pulling me through it. I can't beat it. You don't want to admit that. You don't want to admit that I'm going to have to go somewhere else. I'm going to have to go talk to somebody about it. I may have to get some medication for it. And it's, thankfully, it is getting even more acceptable now through, uh, in, in churches. Uh, actually, you know, I know some people who, who, are getting help even though they go to church but I'm telling you every time somebody posts something like that like that's the answer then it is so harmful and it's so dangerous because what you're doing 
is you're literally uh, encouraging people not to get help when you should be helping these people in like with real life solutions instead of offering them your fairy tale that you know deep down isn't helping you. You know, if you thought about it for five seconds, and it's like I told that person, you know, uh, no thank you. When they're offering me scripture, you're offering me scripture from a book that condones slavery and genocide and rape and, and whatever else. No, I don't, I, like there's nothing in that book I need. There's Like how is that supposed to help me? A book that is that immoral, I don't need it. I'm I'm way more moral than that book. There's nothing in that book that I need. I've read it many times. And so when you're putting that out there, you're encouraging you're discouraging people from getting help. You know, I've seen people on my page who are Christians. Like or you know, on my page on Facebook rather, on my friends list, I've seen people who are going through things, man, and it's, and, and I understand because I'm going through the same things, but I'm watching them go through it from a different perspective, and one day, they're, you know, they're putting everything on Facebook, and, and I, I try not to, like, I try to keep my Facebook a little more happy and upbeat, but, you know, sometimes you just want to put things out there, and that's why I need to get back to making more videos, and maybe I can just you know, I'm, I'm trying to dump all my sad stuff maybe on the counselor and, and, and put the happy stuff, you know, forward on Facebook and stuff. But sometimes you just want to get things out there, how you feel. But it, they put these things out there like just how miserable they are and how horrible life is and they just can't go on and they can't make it. And then the next day, I'll talk about how great God is and God... God's always there for me. He always pulls me through. And you go back to their profile and look. And a lot of times that post they made yesterday about how they can't live and life is miserable. They can't deal with this anymore. They've deleted that post because they're embarrassed about it. Because how could they say that when, you know, if God's the answer. And then and they'll talk about, boy, how could anybody go through this world without God? And then the very next day, they're back in the dumps. They're back and everything's horrible. Everything's awful. Uh, and, you know, it's if it wasn't so sad, it would almost be funny. But it, it it's honestly it's sad and it bothers me. And that's why, you know, I told this person who I like, I was like, you know, I love you. I always will. This, you know, and I hope you understand that. But this is serious. Uh, when you're dealing with people who is dealing with these issues... This is very uh, a serious thing, and I'm not just going to nod along like it's okay what you said. I'm not just going to nod along like, uh, you know, because I'm afraid to step on toes because for some reason we're not supposed to say anything about somebody's religion and, and about somebody's silly beliefs. I just, I just cannot do that, and I'm not going to. I'm going to speak up. I don't care how much I love you, how much, you know, you mean to me. Like we're not, I'm I, like I'm not gonna let that fly, especially in public where other people can see. I'm gonna call that out because I I don't I I really like as much as religion bothers me. This is one issue that I really have a problem with, and that is when people are pretending that that these answers when there's nothing there, there's no substance there, there's no help there, there's no real comfort there, and they're putting that forth. To these people who need help, they need help. Uh, you know, what I'm going through right now, I can't imagine trying to go through it without getting some kind of help. Uh, some kind of real help. And, like, I don't need, you know, these, you know, some feel-good story about some magical man who's going to guide me through. And, and like I said, I know if you're a Christian and you're watching this and that, offends you i'm not going to convince you that god isn't going to help you but all i can say is please be careful when pushing this narrative forward to other people other people that are facing these problems please don't discourage these people from trying to get actual help you know uh tell them you know it's tell them hey i'm going to be praying for you and we'll all be praying for you but in the meantime you need to reach out to somebody you need to you know Talk to your doctor. 
you know, uh, about these things. Get a therapist. You know, what whatever the steps are you need to take. Hey, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling out, if you're feeling low, like give me a call. You know, and then maybe don't just wait for those people to call you. Maybe call them. Uh, reach out because a lot of times when people reach that point, they're not gonna <clears throat> they're not gonna reach out to anybody. Uh, you know, once they reach uh reach that point is is probably not going to happen but just I, I just beg and plead of you this is a uh just a really sensitive subject for me and it bothers me to no end i've seen people uh very close to me suffer uh years ago and and just in my lifetime like we've come forward a lot but i've seen people you know not that many years ago around here and probably a lot of other places uh it was just there was this stigma to getting any kind of help like that for for something like this and it's i see some of it still trying to you know uh some of it's still around and uh it you know it ain't it ain't easy it's 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 hard because people who haven't really dealt with it you know we've all been sad everybody's been a little sad everybody's going through stuff and so sometimes when you go through a lot of things and you went through periods of uh you know sadness and grief or or whatever you think you you might think you fully understand like uh you know full-on depression and and, and and some of these things but in, it's just hard to really understand it unless you've really been there and to to give people this false narrative that they just need to and i would even uh if you're an atheist you know i would say the same thing to people who are telling people ah you just need to do this or that it might be good advice you know to tell somebody hey you know what i bet if you got up and exercised every day you'd feel better you know what man that's actually good advice like if I could get up and exercise every day, I guarantee you I would feel better. I would have to, right? But that's not the answer when you're, uh, that's not going to uh, cure my depression, my anxiety, my OCD, my, you know, and, and whatever else I have going on. Uh, that's not going to fix all of that. Uh, you know, just encourage people to get help, be there for people that's that's the biggest thing be there for them don't always uh you know it's not it's it's nice to tell people hey if you, if you need help and anytime you need something you know give me a call but understand most people especially people who deal with anxiety uh are never going to reach out to you I, I you know i'm just going to be honest with you uh maybe some people will but most people if you're dealing with that you're not going to reach out to other people even if they've told you repeatedly hey man you, you need somebody i'm here uh they're, they're just not going to do that uh i can tell you that through experience uh i'm just like i i'm not going to uh so maybe just you know be there for them you know check in on them every once in a while uh that's really all you got to do. You'd be surprised what uh, uh, a text message here or, uh, you know, whatever. You know, it doesn't, you know, I'm not saying you have to uh, go way out of your way to accommodate people, going, you know, everybody that's going through something. But sometimes just a, a simple message uh, helps a lot. And you might think, well, they never messaged me. And I'm guilty of that, uh, bad. Uh, I, I've said it over and over. I'm, I think I'm a horrible friend. I'm, a, I'm, a, like I, I'll admit that because, uh, I, I have a hard, a real hard time doing those little things I need to do. And uh, so, you know, if you want to help somebody, and that is just that's that's really all i had to say i wish i could articulate it a little better and make it more understandable but that's it's just it just really uh it aggravates me when i see people 
you know, discouraging other people. And I and I can only imagine if I was a Christian, this would the the feelings would be even worse. I would, you know, even I would feel even worse to come forward and admit I'm going through this. And even as an atheist, I dread saying anything. I dreaded, you know, kind of putting it out there. And I gotta say, it hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be, but there's still been some of it. And mostly because, uh, mostly because of my kind of history of expressing myself, I honestly believe, like, very, like, I used to get uh, kind of bombarded by, hey, you need to get in church, you need to do this, you need to do that. But after a while of, I, th I think, like, I went through a, a couple years where it's just like, I guess I was uh, uh, being too open. I, well, I don't know. I, I was just putting myself out there as in my beliefs and my non-beliefs out there to a point, and a lot of people was kind of challenging me. And like after a while, you put yourself out there as an atheist long enough, you kind of wear them down, and nobody really wants to, <laughs> to argue with you. And so I don't really get too much. Uh, I don't get bombarded with a whole lot of uh, the religious stuff anymore. Uh, so that's probably helped me in this situation a little bit. Most people I think know, especially on Facebook, like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bark a pet tree. And that's why I cut it down quick when, um, and you know what? If, if that person that commented, if they had commented, and I've had several people do this, I've had several people when I'm, you know, if I'm going through something, That'll put, hey, I'm praying for you. You know what? I'm not going to get in this big debate. Oh, prayer don't work, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, I might know that, well, that's about as useless as, you know, saying you're going to wish really hard. But, you know, the thing is, is I, I most time I just say thank you. You know, like there's no harm in that. It don't bother me. I'm not going to go off on somebody for that, for saying they'll pray for me. And, and in my eyes, somebody saying, hey, I'll pray for you is no different than an atheist friend of mine saying, hey, I'm thinking about you, man. Like, I hope I hope things get better. Like, to me, that's, there's no difference. That doesn't bother me. But to put something on there, you know, pretending that, you know, when you need real help, pretending that God's the answer, you know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to let that fly because uh, I got bad news for you. He's not. Uh, he's not a comforter. Like, I know so many people feel like they believe they get comfort from God. But here, here's the thing, man. I can say this because I know the game. I've, I've been there. I was a Christian. I know how it works. God is a comforter, and he brought me through so many things. Do you know why? Because I had to believe that he brought me through so many things. I had to believe that. It's, it's kind of demanded by him. He kind of commands you to love him and trust in him and, and all those things so you know how can you believe someone and like how can i take you seriously when i know your entire belief system hinges on you saying that he did this like it's not like you're an unbiased observer like did god comfort me oh let's look let's see if he really did no, you're going to say he did. No matter how the situation, you could pray to God that he, you know, pulls you out of this situation. And if he doesn't, you'll still spin it in his favor. You'll say, God knew that I needed to go through this trial, you know. People will, their own children could be just tragically killed. And they'll spin that in God's favor of, you know, God has a plan. He knows what he's doing. Uh, maybe he, you know, whatever. So when people are, you know, and I'm just, when people are that delusional and people don't like, you know, for you to use that word when you're talking about them, but if you're that delusional, then of course, when you say God is a comfort, he's without him, he would have never pulled me through. Then of course, you know, of course you believe that. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, I, th I think that's going to be my reply to people from now on when they say God's the answer. I mean, he's just going to be like, of course you believe that. You have to. 
Now you literally have to believe that or else it all falls apart for you. And, that, and that's the truth. If you don't believe that he's helping you, if you don't believe he can pull you through that, if you don't believe he was a comforter and a help to you, then it all falls apart. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to make this video as long-winded as the last one. I'm going to get out of here. i got to go back inside. Uh, my wife has uh, requested that I uh, fry some hamburgers uh, this evening. She, uh, man, yesterday she fixed a big pot of chili beans, and we still have some left, and they are the most amazing thing I think I've ever ate. And she said she was using the... Uh, it's uh, supposed to be a recipe to make it taste like chilies. She called it knockoff chilies, and I was like, er, phew, knock off. Ugh. It's supposed to be like Wendy's. What, what did I say, like chilies? It's supposed to be like <coughs> Wendy's chili. She said it was the knockoff, something knockoff recipe of uh, Wendy's chili, and I was like, well, it definitely knocked it off because it's like 10 times better than Wendy's to me. Oh, it's so good. And we still have some left, but... We've ate it two meals in a row. So, uh, she's wanting some burgers tonight, so I'm gonna go in and fry some burgers. Why am I telling you that? I don't know. Because once I start talking, I, it's hard for me to stop. It really is. And, uh, sometimes I like hanging out out here in this building. <sighs> Even though it's cold right now. It ain't real cold, but it's a little cold. It's raining outside. How long can I go? I'm just mumbling. But I'm, I'm going to go. I swear. Uh, it's been good talking to you guys. I'm glad I finally made a video. And I swear to you, I'm going to post this one. And I know this means nothing if I don't post it. Because what good is this promise? You know, if I don't post it, you'll never know I even promised. I could post, like, this part. Like, just... Never mind. Anyway, I'm gone. I love you guys. Uh... uh I'm gonna try to get back and regular posting and uh to my my patrons man i i you know i apologize to you uh, a hundredfold uh i'm sorry like i need to try to get back regular and i know you say hey joe uh some, some of you like uh like don't worry about it you know get better and don't worry about this here's the thing guys like making these videos i think uh does help me so, uh, actually, push me to make more videos. Don't tell me it's okay if I don't push me to make more. Because I, I believe, I, I, and I understand, you say don't worry about uh, making videos. You know, just worry about yourself. It's more important. I understand that. But, in all honesty, I think if I would uh, put some time to this, it would help. And it's like, my therapist wants me to put time, uh, like writing and, and things like that, like, I think, you know, even if it's like writing, even if it's nonsense that nobody ever sees, it's just stuff I'm writing in a book. Like, at least if I spent two hours doing that, it's not the same as spending two hours, you know, mindlessly playing a game on my phone or something. It feels like I've, I've, I've done something productive. So anyway, uh, I want to try to do better, and I hope future videos, uh, maybe I uh, have better news and better updates, and I'll be getting better, uh, you know. I'm, I'm not going to stop fighting. I'm not going to stop fighting this thing. But uh, love you guys. And uh, we'll talk to you later.